Hi everybody, this is Bonnie Barker with Bonnie Bay Crochet and today I want to show you how to make the new Honeycomb Asymmetrical Scarf. Let me go ahead and show you some better pictures right here. If you're also interested in many different ways of wearing, not just the asymmetrical scarf, but just scarves and shawls in general, I'll have a video link in the video description just called New Ways to Wear Shawls. I think you'll find it very informative and I am assisted in that video by a friend of mine, Laura with Jewel Design. So I want you to check that out, it's a lot of fun. But anyway, let's go ahead and make a scarf. To begin, we're going to be starting on the smaller end of this project and we're going to start with the ribbing and the cable only using the one color. This is the lighter speckled colored yarn. And then once we get that to the proper size where we begin crocheting more of the wattle stitch fabric, we're going to add in the contrasting color and then continue to work with two colors from that point on until we work the ending ribbing in which we will return to just the speckled yarn at the end. To begin, we're going to start with a slip knot and a starting chain of 21 chains. That's 10, 15, and 21. Now we're going to start by working double crochets in the fourth chain from the hook. So one, two, three, four. We're going to start right there. And we're going to work a, a double crochet in each chain all the way across the row. At the end of row one, you should have a total of 18 double crochets and I am not including the chain. The turning chain does not count as a stitch in this pattern. Okay, so we're gonna chain two and we're going to begin post ribbing and it works this way. We're gonna skip the first stitch and the first or the next stitch, we're going to work a front post double crochet. If you've never worked post stitches, the only thing different, you don't work through the top of the loops, but instead you work the hook around the body from the front for a front post double crochet for a back post you come in the back door, wrap the hook carefully around the stitch, and complete it by going out the back door again. Front post, double crochet, and then back post, double crochet. So go ahead and work that all the way across, and I will show you how this ends. After working this all the way across, we work a front post double crochet in the last stitch, and then a half double crochet worked in the turning chain. And the stitch count does remain the same because as you recall, we skipped the first stitch. All right, so we're gonna turn, and we're going to chain two, and for row three, we're going to, again, skip that first stitch. We're going to work a back post double crochet to start this row and then a front post double crochet. And then we'll let's try that one again. There we go. So we're going to work this front and back post all the way across the row. And I'll show you how this row ends. This row ends by working a back post double crochet and then a half double in the turning chain and you can already see the ribbed pattern emerging. Okay, for row number four and row number five, we're going to repeat rows two and three 
one more time, and then for row number six, we repeat row number two. So I'm gonna go ahead and give you that three row assignment, and again, you're just gonna start each one with a chain two. If the first stitch is a front post, you work a front post. If it's a back post, you work a back post. Just be sure to work your front post over the front post and the back post over the back post in order to maintain the ribbed pattern. So go ahead and repeat, or go ahead and complete rows four, five, and six in the same manner. This is what you should have after completing six rows, and we are going to work one final row of ribbing. Again, with a chain two, skip that first stitch, and this is also a repeat of row number three, where we start in the back post. So go ahead and work that row all the way across, and after this, we will begin the foundation for our cables. This is what you should have after completing seven rows of the ribbing. Now we're going to begin our cable pattern. We're going to start with a chain two. We're going to skip that first stitch and we're going to work front post double crochets in the next three stitches. Notice I did not work a back post. There are three front post double crochets. Now I'm going to work a half double crochet by working into the top loops. This is not a post stitch, but just a regular half double crochet. And these are going to act as spacers in our cable, helping to further um, give it further definition. So we're going to go ahead and do that again. Three front post double crochets followed by a half double crochet, and again, three front post double crochets, and again, followed by half double crochet, worked into the top loops, and then three more front post double crochets. We're going to end row eight by skipping that next stitch and working a half double crochet in the last stitch of the row. We will not be working in the turning chain right this moment. Now we're going to turn and we're going to chain two and this is row nine. And just for the record, when the odd number rows are being worked on, the back side will be facing and when you're working the even side, you will have the front side and that's determined mainly by the way the cable is going to look once we get it going. Okay, for row nine, we're gonna skip the first stitch and we're going to back post double crochet in the next three stitches. Half double, again, worked into the top loops of that half double and then we're gonna do that two more times. Three back post double crochets, followed by a half double. Three back post double crochets, again, followed by a half double and then three more back post double crochets. And we end by working a half double in the turning chain. Okay, so this is what you should have after completing nine rows. For row 10, we are going to cross the cables. We're gonna start with a chain two and we're going to skip the first stitch and the next three stitches. Half double crochet in the next stitch. Then, now we're going to prepare for a front post treble crochet and we're going to front post treble in the next three stitches. After we do that, 
we're going to do what we call a back cross. We're going to prepare for our trebles again. We're going to come in behind into this opening and we're going to front post treble in this stitch, this stitch, and this stitch. And a good way to do that is to use our nerve endings. Oftentimes, let me go ahead and back this out a bit and I'll show you a good way to do this is to use the nerve endings in your tall man and your thumbkin going back to my kindergarten teaching days. So we prepare for that treble. We come in to the opening and I have my hand on that first stitch. I can feel it. And you can pop your thumb up into the opening as well. And that will oftentimes help to get that stitch. So that's one. We're going to do that two more times. And then the next stitch, which is right there. Locate that with your fingers. And that's two. And for the third one, which is right there next to that half double. If you need more instruction on this, I do have additional stitch videos on my home page. Just look for the Celtic Aaron or Aaron Celtic um, crochet stitches. There is a complete playlist. Now we work a half double crochet the next stitch and half of this is completed so this is a back cross you'll you'll do more of these and understand that better in just a bit but just trust me on this skip the next three stitches half double and the next half double front post treble in the next three stitches and I promise this part is easier Now working in front of the stitches, of the four stitches, the half double and the three post stitches we just completed, we're going to front post treble in this stitch, this stitch, and then this stitch. It does feel like a big reach as you do this, but, but that is the correct way to do this. It's going to take a few rows before this looks like a whole lot, but I promise you, if you do this correctly, you may actually like it. And we work a half double crochet in the turning chain for that last stitch. And so let's go ahead and you can see how this side of the cable is on top and is turning this way and this one is turning the opposite way. So this is a back cross. This is a front cross. It's called the back cross because these stitches were worked behind and these stitches were worked in front. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn. Now we're going to work row 11 with the chain two. And this is how you work these stitches with the half double crochets after completing the crossing of the cables row. We're going to skip that first stitch, back post, double crochet, and the next three stitches. Half double in between, well, let me go ahead and back this out. In between the last stitch that we just worked and the next stitch, there is not a half double. It's just where the um, stitches crossed on the last row. We're going to add in a half double just in that space between the stitches. It's not actually a stitch. Then we work three more back post double crochets. We only use the treble crochets when crossing the cables on the front side in this design. After that, we are going to skip this half double crochet and then half double in that next stitch. And let me pause. For those who are mathematically inclined, we did add a stitch in here and then we skip this stitch, thereby mathematically canceling each other out so that the stitch count, at least for this row, uh, as compared to the others, remains constant. That's going to change in a bit, but right now it remains constant. Go ahead and work three more. Back post, double crochets. Half double. In the space, again, it's between the last stitch and the next stitch. It's where those cables crossed. And then three more back post 
double crochets. And then at the end of the row, we work a half double in that turning chain. This is what it looks like on the back side. And let's take a look at the front. All right, so now we're ready for row number 12. Okay, and row number 12 is actually a repeat of row number eight. We're going to chain two, skip that first stitch, and we are going to work three front post double crochets, one in each of the next three stitches, half double, in that half double working into the top loops and again we're going to repeat that two more times three front post double crochets a half double worked into the half double three more front post double crochets and then a half double worked into the half double. Let me try that again. Sometimes the hook can get hung up in the strands. And then three more front post double crochets. And a half double worked in that turning chain. Now we're going to turn and we're going to work row number 13 which is a repeat of row number nine with the chain two and we're pretty much going to do the same thing but with back post double crochets skip the first stitch and we're going to work a back post double crochet in each of the next three stitches followed by a half double crochet so let's do that two more times three back post, double crochets, and then a half double worked into the top of that next stitch. Three more, back post, double crochets, and a half double crochet in that next stitch, and lastly, three more back post double crochets and that last half double is worked into the turning chain and this is what the back side looks like and let's turn and this is the front side and this is after completing 13 rows now for rows 14 and 15 we're simply going to repeat the last two rows Again, we're going to chain two, and I'll just talk you through this. Front post double crochets in these three stitches, half double, front post, half double, front post, half double, front post, and then a half double in the turning chain. Then we turn, again, chain two, and then we work three back post double crochets, half double, three back post, half double, etc., and a um, chain, I'm sorry, half double in the turning chain as well. So go ahead and work the next two rows. This is going to be rows 14 and 15. Now we're going to work row 16 and we are going to close the top of the honeycomb. This group of stitches is going to cross on top in a front cross and this group of stitches is going to cross behind in a back cross. So I'll go ahead and demonstrate that for you now. Go ahead and chain two skip that first stitch and the next three stitches and half double in that half double crochet and now we're going to front post treble in the next three stitches working in front of those last four stitches we're going to work a front cross by working treble front post trebles in those three stitches that we skipped. We don't work in the very first end stitch, just the next three stitches that were the post stitches. 
After we do that, we're going to half double in the next half double, skip the next three stitches, half double in that next half double, front post treble in the next three stitches, Now working behind those last four stitches, we're going to front post treble in the three stitches that we just skipped. And again, you can use your finger up there um, to help you locate those stitches with your nerve endings in your fingers. And there's the next one. So I locate that and just pick that up just like so. This may be a little awkward at first. Give yourself time to, to understand where those stitches are. Okay, and then half double in the turning chain. And let's take a look. This is after completing 16 rows and you see how the cable closes. All right, so now we're going to turn, chain two, and we are going to work row 17, which is the same as row, the same as row 11. We work a chain two, back post, double crochet, and the next three stitches. working between that last stitch and next stitch, next stitch. This is the center of the cable. Go ahead and add a half double crochet in there. And then again, three more back post double crochets. And half double that next half double. Three more back post double crochets. And then we're going to half double in between that last stitch and next stitch, which again is the center of the cable. And then three more back post double crochets. And again, skip that half double and work a half double in the turning chain. And let's take a look. So this is what you should have after completing 17 rows. This is what you should have after completing 17 rows. Now for rows 18 and 19, they are going to be another repeat of rows eight and nine. And I'll just talk to you about these. We're just going to Chain two, work three front post double crochets, half double, three front post doubles, half double, three front post, half double, three front post double crochets, and a half double in the turning chain. Turn, and again, chain two. Then we're gonna do that again, but with back post, through three back post double crochets, a half double, three back post, half double, three back post, half double, three back post, and Go ahead and work a half double in that turning chain. So go ahead and work rows 18 and 19. This is what you should have after completing 19 rows. Now I'm going to give you a small assignment for rows 20 through 29. I'm going to have you repeat rows 10. And that's where this cable was first crossed outward. Rows 10 through 19, which is the row that we just finished. I'm going to go ahead and put a little time mark at the bottom of the screen where you can go back in the video and re-watch rows 10 through 19 if you need that stitch support. So go ahead and complete that and then we will begin adding our new color in once we complete row 29. Okay, so I've worked this 
cabling section. Now, when we get to the stitches worked in the chain two, this is going to change, and this is also where we are going to add in our new color. Okay, so we are going to work our first V stitch. So we pull up and we prepare the stitch. Let me go ahead and do that again. Wrap the hook, insert, pull up a loop. Now before pulling through, we're going to change to the new color and we're going to complete the stitch with this color. Don't worry about this stitch. Um, we are going to pick up this yarn on the next, in, within the next few um, stitches. So we're going to do that. We're going to chain one. We're going to work another, another stitch. So we formed our first V stitch of the pattern. After that stitch, that half double, so we formed our first half double V stitch. We're going to chain two and kind of chain two loosely as you turn. We're going to also turn now. This is for row 31. And we're going to work a half double in that last half double by working in to the top loops. And now we're going to work a half double in the chain one space by working half double, a chain one, and another half double. But this is also where we're going to be changing back. So we're going to push this yarn aside and we're going to pick up again with the color changing yarn as we work over the cable. And then now we continue working the stitches over the cable, working those back post double crochet. Again, this is a repeat of row 11, just the way you've been working on the back side of this cable. So I'll go ahead and finish the cable portion and turn and then show you how to proceed from there. At the end of, or towards the end of row 32, I have worked all the stitches of the cable except the last one. I just need to wrap and complete. And before I do that, I'm going to drop this color and I'm going to go back to the blue or the contrasting color and go ahead and complete that stitch like so. And then we're working in the chain one spaces. We're going to work, oops, let's try that again. We're going to work a half double crochet V-stitch in that first chain one space and and there's not one there but there is one in the the um, turning chains in that half double crochet so go ahead and work a V-stitch in that space so now we have two V-stitches at the end of row 32 alright so let's turn chain two. Now we are just going to work, we're not going to work in this stitch, we're just going to work in the V stitches because we actually are adding to this row simply with the turning chain. Okay, so we're going to work a V stitch in that first one and then go to the next V stitch and work a V, half double crochet V stitch in there and before completing this stitch, bring the yarn forward when you're changing colors with the back side facing. Always keep the color changes towards the back. Okay, change to that cable color, and then we're back to working in the cable pattern. And this is the row where we just work those back post double crochets as we elongate that honeycomb. So I'll go ahead and work this to the end and just as a reminder, this side on the left, as the back side is facing, okay, it's, I'll, I'll turn it around so that you can see, this side will never increase. This will remain the same. We will always end this side, and that's with the, the, um, the cable color. We, by, we end this row by working a half double crochet, well, here it is, in that turning chain. So that's the way, um, the rows with the back side facing will always end. So go ahead and finish this and then I'll show you um, the next row. As I complete this last stitch of the cable, 
I'm going to drop the cable color and bring the contrasting color back in to complete that stitch and then go to working my half double crochets. Let's try that again. Chain one, half double crochet, working only in the chain one spaces. And then work a half double crochet in the chain, turning chain. Okay, now I've added a stitch marker to remind me of when to add a new V stitch in at the end of the row. Okay, so we're going to add a V stitch, a new V stitch every fourth row. So, and that will be with the front side facing. So going back to our row count, this was row 30, 31, this is 32, 33, 34, and then we're gonna work row 35, and then on row 36, we're going to add in another V stitch. So I'll go ahead and work those with you and show you how that looks because this is pretty much what we're going to be doing for the remainder of this project. I'm going to chain two. I'm going to half double in the half double space. And then we're going to work the V stitch in each of the next chain one spaces. So even though the end, let me go ahead and add a chain one there. So let me explain a little bit. So even though we don't have a V-stitch here, the next row that follows this, it will have a V-stitch. So right now we are counting just these two as the V-stitches so that when we get to you know four rows past this that had the first two stitches, then we will have an additional one. I know that sounds a little complicated, but it really isn't. So let's go ahead and let's back this out again. Before completing that last half double crochet, I nearly forgot this. I need to go ahead and switch to the cable color and then complete the cable. And this is um, the row where we're just working back post double crochets. The next row we will be crossing cables. So I'll go ahead and finish this again, ending this row with a half double in the turning chain. And then I will show you the row that follows, which we will be adding a new V-stitch. So now I'm completing the last stitch, which is right here. That was worked behind these last four stitches. And it's time for me to switch colors. So I'm going to put this color down and switch to the solid color. And getting over to the V-stitches, we're going to work the half double crochet, chain one, half double crochet, that first V-stitch. Now do be careful not to work them in between the V-stitches because then you'll have way too many stitches. So make sure you look for the chain one spaces when you work these half double V-stitches. Okay, so we have two. Now we're going to add the third for the first time. We're going to work it between the half double and that turning chain. So go ahead and work that half double, chain one, half double, just like that. Now we're going to chain two, turn, and we begin row 37. And again, row 37, we're just going to work in the V-stitches. So we will um, not add the fourth V-stitch until row, see, 37, 38, 39, 40. So row 40, we'll be adding that fourth V-stitch. So this gives a gradual increase to your project. Okay, and again, before you complete that last half double, switch over to the cable color, and again, can continue in with the cable pattern. I hope it's not too confusing. I, I taught the cable pattern clearly. If you need some review on that, definitely go back but it just seemed just a bit redundant to teach that one over and over again. So let me go ahead and turn and let you see how this looks. So the join actually looks quite good and you're not gonna have any colors 
you know, yarn to hide or anything like that. Just make sure that the strands are somewhat taut, not too tight, but um, in knitting, these are often called floaters, but just make sure that they are of about the same tension that you are crocheting and this should be fine in your project. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and continue to repeat this until it reaches the size um, that I desire. And let me go ahead and, um, let's see, I have, I'm going to go ahead and move my stitch marker. Definitely use a stitch marker on that. Every time you add a new V-stitch, add a stitch marker. Because I'm saying this, I'm repeating myself, but that way you know if this is in one row, then we're going to count one, two, three. And on that fourth row following this stitch, you'll know that I'm going to have an additional um, V-stitch. I may have said waddle stitch. Um, I meant V-stitch added to your project. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and work on this for, for many rows, and then I'll show you my progress. So every four rows, I am adding a another waddle stitch and just as a review like for example we added a new waddle stitch on this row and then we chain two turn so then the next row has the chain two as well as a waddle stitch worked in a added waddle stitch and then the next row is going to have a half double crochet in that chain two space and then the next stitch the next row rather has the chain two and a um, half double in that half double. And then the fourth row after that has a new waddle stitch. So this is how these are added um, every four rows. And you can see that creates a very even increase. And let me just show you the join. And as you can see, the join is pretty much seamless. I mean, you really don't see where the yarn changes. And let's take a look at the back where the yarn is joined each time you go from the fabric to the cable and then the cable to the fabric. So you can see the possibilities are endless as far as joining other colors. And you could even stripe this project by adding other colors, you know, into the V stitches as well. And this could be a really fun way to um, use up some of that sock yarn in your yarn stash. Well, I'm going to go ahead and work a little bit more until I get to the part where I'm going to change to the ribbing, which would be at the end of the project. So I'm going to just continue this on until I run close on my yarn. So I'm also going to make sure that I have enough of of this color for the ribbing. But um, also just remember to move your stitch marker every four rows so that you can keep track of these increases. Now I'm about to transition back to the final ribbing at the end of the scarf, but let me go ahead and review with you what I've done. So we initially have 28 rows from the very beginning through the cable until this point. So once we add in the new color, then I worked an additional 138 rows. Now remember, every fourth row is going to be adding in a new V stitch, a half double crochet V stitch. So let's go ahead and take a look at how this has grown. So we have quite a lot of fabric at this point. So let's go ahead and take a look. And this would be at row 166 at this point. So I want to give you a stitch count. I have 35 of the V stitches plus a half double crochet and a turning chain at the end of this row. Or at the, I was actually at the beginning of row 166, which would have had the back side facing. Okay, so let me say something about these numbers. Now you may not have as much yardage on this secondary color as I did, and if you didn't, that's still okay. You can just transition into working the um, the original color with the ribbing. Now for row 167, 
I've gone ahead and worked the cable section just the way we've been working. And I want to show you the part that is going to change right here. So now to begin the foundation row for or continuing on row 167, but we're laying the foundation from this point on in the half double crochets for ribbing from this point on. So what we're going to do is we're going to work three double crochets in each chain one space as you work across. And we are not changing colors to the blue as you see, but we're continuing on with the um, yellow, the original color that we started the cable with. So in order to set this up, just go ahead and work three double crochets in each chain one space of the V stitches as you work across. So you're going to have these clusters of three going across on this row. And I'll show you how this row ends. So work this all the way across and in the last space we work three double crochets just like that. So that's how we finish row number one. Now for row number two we're going to turn chain two and we're going to begin working the ribbing again just like we did at the beginning. We're going to skip the first stitch then we're going to work a front post double crochet followed by a back post double crochet. Now for rows two through seven they're going to all be worked the same so I'll just show it to you one time. We're going to chain two, skip the first stitch, front post double crochet followed by a back post double crochet. This is just the way we did at the very beginning of this project. Front post followed by a back post. Front post double crochet followed by a back post. Okay, So we're going to do this all the way across the row. At the end of the row we're going to work a half double crochet worked into the chain two turning space. Okay, But the other thing when you are working the front and back post make sure for rows that follow this that you work front post over the front post and a back post over the back post so that you end up with the ribbing. Once you complete the seven rows just fasten off with a chain and pull it tightly and make sure that you cut a generous strand so that you can hide that loose end within your work. Once you complete the seven rows this is what you should have. I hope you enjoyed making the honeycomb asymmetrical scarf with me today. If you did, I would love to hear from you. Please feel free to post in the video description below. God bless. Bye-bye.